also was blessed with a keen sense of hearing as she can tell when someone is coming from afar and can differentiate each person's walking step and knew their scent as well she could tell how you looked by feeling your face to Once upon a time, there lived a girl named Modupe, or Mo for short. Modupe was raised by her grandmother ever since she was born, as her parents died while she was still a baby. Her mother died while giving birth to her, and her father was so heartbroken that he died few days apart from his wife. This happened while he was walking down the road. He wasn't focused on where he was going and got knocked down by a moving vehicle. Mo was also born blind and things has been so difficult for her ever since. People avoided coming close to her and often referred to her as cursed. She had many times in the past tried to hurt herself and even to kill herself as she believed everything people said about her. She wondered why her mother would die while giving birth to her, and her father passed on too, leaving her behind because of the pains of losing his wife. Mo's grandmother would always show her love and kindness. She made sure she assisted Mo with anything she wanted. Even though Mo was blind, she was a sharp girl who could get around doing things for herself without needing her sight. Mo had a good friend, Jennifer, Jen for short. They both hung out together to play and discuss. Jen was finding it hard to make friends with people because she wasn't such a pretty girl, unlike Mo, her best friend, who even though blind, she was such a pretty girl. But the stigma she had from birth made it almost impossible for her to make friends. Jen was her eyes in which she used in understanding how the world works around her. Mo wasn't a lazy girl. She usually wakes up early at the first cock crow and would get up and get ready to leave for her workshop where she sells her merchandise. She also knew how to differentiate between money and paper so as to know when someone wants to cheat her as she is a very smart girl. She also was blessed with a keen sense of hearing, as she can tell when someone is coming from afar and can differentiate each person's walking step and knew their scent as well. She could tell how you looked by feeling your face to know if you are handsome or beautiful or what the shape of your face looked like. She has an open heart and easily trusts people so much her grandmother one night, while they were having supper, told Modupe that the world we live in is very dangerous, that you should be very careful when dealing with humans, that they are full of deceit. She warns Modupe not to trust anyone easily till you at least get to know them and always be careful who you share your secrets with. She told her grandmother that she knows that Jen is the only person she trusts. Her grandmother told her that the worst kind of enemies are the ones found within and charged her to be very careful. She thanked her grandmother for the advice and bade her good night. She pondered on what her grandmother told her and decided to keep the advice very close to her heart. One day, while Mo was selling her wares, a young man walked up to her to buy her product. She got discussing with him and he asked her, wasn't she scared that he would cheat her? She said, no, she is not. She further asked him, what will he gain in cheating a blind girl? He said, oh, I did not know you were blind. Your movement doesn't show it. And I don't see your walking stick beside you. She replied saying, I only make use of it when I want to go home. But I pretty much know my way home. She discussed with the man at length and he found her funny. She asked what his name was and he said his name was Paul. She told him it was nice to meet him and while he took his leave, 
he promised to come visiting another time. Jen, her friend, is a very supporting girl and they both discussed at length whenever she came to visit Mo at her store. Jen, one day, while at Mo's shop, noticed a strange man smiling and walking up to them. Immediately, Mo caught his scent and said, Paul, is that you? He replied saying yes, and they made a little joke. Jen asked Mo who he was, and she replied saying her regular customer. After he purchased an item, he bade her goodbye and left. Jen asked her girlfriend who the man was and why she didn't tell her about him. She said she did not see any reason to that. They are just friends, like she said. Jen told her that he is sure handsome. She replied saying, I know, right? She then asked her friend how she knew. She said she felt his face. Jen said, are you both that close that he let you feel his face? She said, it's nothing serious, okay? Jen replied saying, I hope you know what you're doing, you know. Be very careful. She said she will be. Jen decided to make it a habit to always be at Mo's shop. To the point, Mo asked her if she was really free and had nothing doing. She said it's fine that her younger sister is at home. Mo told her grandmother about the young man. She told her to be very careful with him. But from her expression, she could tell her granddaughter was in love. She told her to be very careful that not every man has your best interest at heart especially now that you are blind, that she shouldn't be gullible. Jen would always be by Mo's side, assisting her and trying to wade off the young man, as she was already getting uncomfortable with the young man's constant visit. One day, Jen asked her friend if she was in love with the young man, and she said, yes, my dear friend. Jen gave out a grin. Mo asked Jen if everything was all right, as she could tell her mood has changed. She replied saying everything is alright, that she just wants to make sure that no one hurts her, that she loves her so much for any man to want to hurt her. The next day, Modubel's grandmother went to her friend's house, Jen, to go in search of her daughter. Jen said, you haven't seen Mo? Jen mentioned that she was with her yesterday at the store and she was getting ready to go meet her. Her grandmother started wailing on the floor. Jen told her to go back home, that she will go in search of her and make sure she returns. Jen went to places they usually go and could not find Mo. She organized a group of boys and they went looking for Mo, but still could not find her. They searched and searched, but still no way of locating Mo. Jen asked her to stay at Mo's store and wait for the young man Paul for when he visits. He returned saying he did not see the young man. Jen said to Mo's grandmother, Are you sure this young man hasn't succeeded in kidnapping Mo? Her grandmother wailed the Mo. They could only hope that nothing happens to her. After two weeks, Paul came visiting their grandmother. She asked who he was and he said he is Paul, her granddaughter's friend. Her grandmother held him by his shirt and let out a loud scream, attracting neighbors to their home, shouting, asking him where her granddaughter Mo was. Paul said, I don't know. It's been a while I saw her. That I am just coming into the village and decided to visit her home as I did not meet her at her store. I figured she must be home. Not quite long, young men gathered at her home and had wanted to lunch on Paul when an old man asked that Paul be taken to the Igwe's palace for proper questioning and judgment. The young man Paul asked, what have I done? Please let me go. I am not from this village. I only came to see the girl I love. You love? That is why you kidnapped her or have even killed her and you are here acting innocent. Mo's grandmother retorted. News reached then that the man has been caught and has been taken to the Igwe's palace for questioning. She immediately rushed to the palace and saw the commotion going on there. 
The king declared that he will stay in the palace cell till he can provide the whereabouts of Mo. Jen was happy and left the palace. Some days after, a declaration was made that if after a month's time and Paul doesn't tell them the whereabouts of Mo, he will be executed by hanging. He started to plead with them that he is innocent and knows nothing of Mo's location. That they should ask Jen, Mo's best friend, to confirm his story. Jen said, ask who? Please, I don't know you so well. And your intentions towards my friend wasn't genuine. You think you can harm my friend and act like nothing happened? You must be joking. A month later, and still no news about Mo and it was decided he will be hanged to death. He pleaded he'd be allowed to at least inform his people of his whereabouts. They said a message would be sent to them in due course. On the day he was to be hanged, just as they were about to put the rope on his neck, Mo came into their midst and shouted, Stop! Jen was so shocked to see her and tried to escape, but Mo shouted her name, and asked her to stop there and tell everyone what she did. Mo was staring at her directly. Jen asked Mo, This one you're looking at my direction with your eyes and not your ears. Can you see me? She said yes, that she has regained her sight. Jen went on her knees and started to plead for mercy. She said she did not know what came over her, that she should please forgive her that she let jealousy get the better of her. Mo let out a cry. She queried, Why will you hurt me because of a man? Jen now explained to her friend that she is so beautiful that even in blindness, she has someone that wants to marry her while no one has ever looked her way since her youth and that she decided she wasn't going to let herself to be mocked by people. That her friend though blind was about to get married before her with two eyes that no she wasn't going to let that happen mo went to her grandmother and hugged her and said she saw mom she turned and faced the crowd and narrated that on the said day she went missing that she closed with her friend after she decided to confide in her friend that paul has asked her to marry him that jen said wow that she wants to take her somewhere special to celebrate. She replied telling Jen that she will celebrate when things became official. But Jen insisted and she took Mo along a path she wasn't used to. And after a while, she let go of her friend and asked. After she asked if they were not there yet, Jen told her that where they are, no one will find her. She should not bother that she can't kill her but the wild animals would devour her and thus she left her there for dead. That she has been alone in the forest for weeks and even she thought she would die and began to wonder why life has been so unfair to her. It was when she was at the brink of death that she had an encounter with the spirit of her late mother who told her that she has been by her side all through these years and had never left her. She said her mother told her that she won't die. Instead, she will have a refreshed life from Jeron and took her through the journey of life. She also gave her the gift of sight and told her to be sad no more and go and do exploits in her life. Immediately her mom disappeared. She realized she could see and so she went in search of food and water in the forest before she could retrace her movements and found someone who gave her directions because she wandered so far from home when she was still blind and looking for help. Everyone turned to her friend in shock and Jen said she was sorry that she did not mean to let jealousy do this. The king immediately requested that the young man be set free and Jen should take his place. Mo went before the king on her knees and pleaded for mercy on behalf of Jen. The king accepted her request and banished Jen never to step foot in his kingdom again, else he won't spare her. 
Jen, with tears in her eyes, thanked her friend as she was taken away by the palace guard. Mo went to hug Paul and with tears she said, I thought I would never hear your voice again, but seeing you now is a big blessing to me. She said, I love you, Paul, and never want to lose you. Overjoyed, Paul replied saying, I love you too, and they both left for Mo's home. Mo's grandmother apologized to Paul and said she shouldn't have listened to what Jen had to say. They hugged and later went on to discuss their wedding preparations ahead and they clicked wine glasses together in celebration of love. The end. The lesson to be learned from this story is never let envy and jealousy make you do things you will regret. It's not everything you should divulge to people as you do not know who has your best interest at heart. Always have faith and keep your hope alive as you do not know what life has installed for you. Thank you so much for listening to my story. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please, please, please kindly click on the subscribe button as it helps us grow. Turn on the post notification so you'll be the first to know when I drop a new story. Like, share and leave us a comment. I will see you in my next video. Till then, bye!